Welcome to Help You Radio, everybody. This is Dr. Keisha Ewers, your wellness coach and advisor for today. I'm bringing you radio that empowers you to heal yourself. And today, my guest is John Morton, who is the spiritual director of the Church of the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness, the headquarters in Los Angeles, California, and communities all over the world. John holds a doctoral degree in spiritual science from Peace Theological Seminary at the College of Philosophy and is the author of the book, The Blessings Already Are, and You Are the Blessings. And since 1979, he's traveled the world teaching practical spirituality, inspiring audiences, and awakening to the divinity of their soul, and seeing the blessings in themselves, living a loving life, and sharing their inherent goodness. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. Good to be with you. It's good to be with you, too. So I, we were talking off air, and I've interviewed your colleague, Paul Kay, before, and we had a lovely talk over the hour, and I love the work that you guys are doing, and you talk a lot about blessings, and so since this is the focus of both of your books, how do you define the word blessing? I just define it as simply as I can in my experience, which is just greater good. So it's about good and more of it, and how can we create that, and how can we allow that in our life? very lovely thing to have in this day and age. Is this more essential for our generation than others, or do you think it's pretty much what we need every single time we come to the planet? <laughs> uh, I think we know the answer to that one. We always need greater good, and, and I see it as uh, we can make our life move in a positive direction or a negative direction. It's our choice. It's going to move one way or the other. It, it, it does not stay still. It's not static. So it, it's really a choice whether we want it to be greater good or we want to let it slip away into negativity or react to the situations in the world. So you talk about finding the greater good in the middle of a crisis in your life or a tragedy or a disaster and about how, you know, the blessing can hurt. How, how does this translate for you? Well, the first part of that is in compassion, uh, that I think it's very natural and ordinary to, to feel hurt, uh, to be disappointed, uh, upset, that these are human responses, that we shouldn't feel like there's something wrong with us when we're upset, but there's, there's also an opportunity to change it and transform, you know, so we heal, you know, that that's important if we, if we feel the wound it, whether that's physical or it's emotionally, internally, that we're, we're wounded, we're, we're contracted. And so the opportunity is to, you know, start out with that awareness. And then what can we do to heal or what can we do to make it better? Just real simple questions. Okay. I kind of see emotional reactivity as a symphony, the way I describe it to my clients when I'm working with them. And you, know, you can't always have the twinkling flutes and the violins and the trombones, you know, by themselves. Having the whole symphony play together, you get this very wonderful, harmonious music. But you also don't want kettle drums all the time and uh, cymbals, right? That that could be not a great place to hang out vibrationally. And so I think that a lot of times people have the idea that they shouldn't feel bad or they shouldn't feel pain. They what I call shitting all over themselves, but, you know, it's like, I'm not allowed to feel this, and, and I love what you just said, because being able to recognize, acknowledge, and validate what you're feeling, and moving from there allows you to not get stuck in it, because don't you find that if people reject the feeling of sadness, then it will kind of get stuck. Yeah, it's like, do you want to, what's already difficult to get worse. I think any person in their right mind, or in their wisdom, would say, no, I don't want to make it worse. And it's like, okay, then and right now, uh, maybe go to a neutral corner or, or, or just acknowledge to yourself, I'm really upset, instead of sometimes the reaction is in denial, like, oh, no, or this can't be. And, and it's like, well, it is. And, you know, let's start out by it is what it is and, and deal with it whatever is going on and uh, you know when it's really severe people are often in shock they're stunned and you know there are ways to deal with that and that's often when somebody needs to have the wisdom either to ask for help or others recognize 
hey, you need help. Let me help you. Right. I think one of the biggest learnings I've had in my entire 50 years of being here is that all unhappiness comes from unmet expectations that I had. And so if I have an expectation that someone's going to behave a certain way and then they don't or that something will turn out in a certain way and it doesn't, you know, or that I'm going to perform in a certain way and I don't, you know, each one of those is an expectation that I had. And I, I learned this when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, and it was like this epiphany went off in my mind and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm the common denominator in every upset that I have here. And so I think if we have an expectation that things won't go uh, into chaos, then we're going to be disappointed a lot, right? Correct. And, you know, one of the things we, we teach, uh, we call uh, turning points, that there's always a turning point. And, uh, you know, when we're in emotional upset, there's a turning point, and it can be release the expectation, release the attachment. Um, and if you don't, it, that's where the pain is. Uh, we're holding on. If we would let go, which is you know, really, it, it, at times when we're upset, it's like we want to hang on, we want to grab onto something, and really what's needed is relax, let go. This is not a time to try to do anything. It's a time to be aware, uh, to be conscious of what you need. Uh, and, and again, if, if, the, if we can, then we put up a help message, and, uh, or hopefully we have people around us who can see that, that we need guidance, assistance, support. Yes, indeed. Uh, you know, I, I, I see that one of the blessings is sharing and caring, you know, that e extending to others, extending to our life. Uh, you know, even if, you know, people say, well, I, I don't get along with people, but I get along with my garden. And I go, okay, you know, that, that's beautiful. We're, you know, that, there's nothing wrong there uh, that you find ways to nurture yourself and, and deliver self-caring and sharing uh, so that the plants do help people or even inanimate objects, I mean, people that love their car, you know, that, that that can be something that's nurturing to go out and, you know, wash the car, give it a good wax. I wish my teenage picked up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is how you can work that out, honey, go wax my car. <laughs> that's well, where Karate Kid came up, right? Well, and Tom Sawyer, I think Tom Sawyer had that one down, you know, like on a Saturday afternoon, we're going to go whitewash my picket fence because that's exactly. what I, <laughs> and you're all going to have fun. It's going to be entertainment. <laughs> that's right. So you know, a lot of times, you know, we hear the serenity prayer and we hear uh, non-attachment in Buddhism and a lot of spiritual traditions have talked about not being attached to a certain outcome or uh, being able to accept what is, you know, and surrender and to let go. And somehow that can come into conflict with the idea that people might hold that, well, then should I not ask for things to change? You know, should I not set any intention out there for it to have a different outcome then if I just have to surrender and accept all the time? What, what do you say about that? Well, one of the things I say is, that, you know, a great approach in life is we hope for the best, ask for what we want. And, and don't be bashful about it. You know, we often say, ask for the grocery store. I guess this, these days it'd be the superstore. But ask for what you want. Prepare for the worst so that, it, you know, something that you're not expecting, not wanting, does in fact happen. I mean, maybe today there's people, you know, that yesterday their house was there, now it's burned down. Uh, you know, there's things like that that go, go on in life. And so be prepared. What would that be? And a lot of times it is, well, I'm going to reach out. I need to reach out to somebody. I don't even know where I'm going to sleep tonight. It's like, okay, you know, these are the ways we reach out. And then another part of it is shoot down the middle. Practically, I think most of us live in the middle somewhere. That it's not, you know, the beautiful violins playing all the time, nor is it things crashing and burning all the time. It's somewhere in the middle. There's a... Uh philosophy of visualizing what it is that you want to move into, right? You know, make sure you're clear and you're focused and you have these very clear intentions visualized. But then, I, you know, like 
what I understand in my own life and what I will usually teach is to visualize that, create a vision board, make it as real as you possibly can and crystallize it, and then don't be attached to the way that the, it manifests itself. That's the thing. You know, it's getting out of the way then for the universe to do its thing, and that is not necessarily going to be along the same road that you thought it was going to travel on. Um, it can be better, you know, <laughs> or it can contain some seed of a uh, new opportunity for you that you didn't even realize that is in growth. And I always think if we grow, then there's a, there's a little bit of pain associated with that. It's challenging, right? When we're challenged, we are disrupted and not entirely comfortable. And sometimes what we're visualizing is that we're going to have contentment for the rest of our lives. And I don't actually think that's our journey here, do you? No, I practically, again, I, I'd say it's somewhere in the middle, but I, I do encourage people to uh, have an ideal scene, uh, to go for the best vision, uh, you know, dream big, uh, and, and then see where your heart connects, then see what happens in life so this is practical. Uh, be prepared that it, it isn't necessarily going to be exactly what you imagined. I, I almost always when somebody realizes their dream it's like is it exactly what you imagined no and sometimes it's like it's even better so right. it can be better than what somebody imagined and and then sometimes it's well it's not quite it's very different but it's it's actually fulfilling that's a big key you know is it fulfilling is it better for you so i do encourage people to be very clear about what you imagine what you picture visualization and, and doing these things like a, a board or something outwardly where you cut out pictures and you put words that are re really meaningful to what you want to create uh, and and move toward it you know very important to realize well what could I do now what would be a next step toward that uh, even if it seems small and inconsequential go ahead and start doing things you know like a cinch by the inch even though it's like, well, I have miles to go, and I'm only—I I went three inches today. It's like, well, that's that's closer. And then, you know, often something happens, like a magic bridge that you didn't know existed, that makes it uh, half as long as as you thought in your mind, because something kind of miraculous happens. And we also encourage people to consider there is a higher power or a god or whatever term people would use, but to consider that we can pray, we can invoke a consciousness that knows best, knows what's going to really serve your happiness, your health, um, your success in the best way, and to ask for that to come forward. And as it's been said long ago, sometimes that's mysterious, that it, it moves in mysterious ways. I, I was meditating years ago, and, and uh, the word abundance came up for me. And I saw it in my mind as these dancing letters that separated themselves out into three different words, A, fun, dance. And I thought, oh, that actually means that once I have the inspiration and the input from my receptive side, from God, from my higher self, from that side that I am in and connected to collective consciousness when I'm meditating, I need to get up and do something with that, you know. I need to actually get my buns in gear. That's a bun dance, right? <laughs> that was very life-changing to realize, you know, I think that that's one of the things that happens with movies like The Secret or um, anything that just encourages you to visualize. You actually do need to take those steps towards it. You've got to um, then put your activity in that direction. So that was a good point. Yeah. This is doing level, so I think one of the people, or I say, should say the ways people limit themselves is by, by not taking action. Uh, and I'm not talking about impulsive things or reactive actions. That can be counterproductive, but things that actually move it closer, that, you're, that, that you've done something that's building the foundation. You've done something that's creating what you want, even if, again, it seems small in the moment, that these things build stone by stone, day by day, to something really great. So, you have an event coming up here in the Seattle area on August 8th, and in fact, it's at the Sheridan Bellevue Hotel from 2 to 4.30 p.m., and it's called Afternoon of Blessings with John Morton. That's coming right up, right? It definitely is, and it's a uh, 
an open workshop, so it's available to you know whoever's listening. Uh, and it's it's really about again greater good, and, and I try to make it as simple and as practical, and also that people have an immediate experience, you know, so they come out of uh, the two and a half hours experiencing blessings, enthused about greater blessing, and having some action steps in mind. Beautiful. So we've got two free tickets to that event, and I. Do you have a URL or a place that people can go to learn more about the event? Uh, yes, the, the one that would be the most direct um, and then opens up uh, my world is msia.org, which MSI stands for the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness.org. We have an event coming up on August 8th, which is this Saturday, right. at the Sheridan Bellevue Hotel. And it's from 2 o'clock to 4.30 p.m. So, John, you've talked about people bringing the blessing of touching more actively into their lives. Can you explain what you mean by this? Sure. Uh, you know, it's like reach out and touch somebody, like the song. Um, and that's a great song. Just if you were listening to the lyrics and, and then dancing your buns <laughs> around to the music. You know, it's like it's important to touch and be touched. Um, you know, and sometimes people associate, well, that's a sexual thing. And it's like, well, it can be, but it's also an affectionate thing. It's a, I care about you. I love you. I naturally touch what I love, and, and I can do it in a caring way, a blessed way. Uh, or, I, you know, you could do it in a way like, hey, you know, I don't like you, or you're bothering me, or something like that. So taking it more in the direction of touching. And it is connection, so energy flows. It's contact. We are conduits of energy. And often, just touching somebody when you don't have words, it works. If you can do that in a way, even if you're grimacing, uh, you know, anybody I think is, who's been in an intimate relationship understands that touching somehow is often, that's the way. You know, words are not doing it but touching can do something that words don't know how to do. Uh, and it just says, I care, or I'm here, uh, we're connected. And, you know, doing that to a stranger also works. You know, so that it's one of the ways to contact somebody who's in shock, who's deeply hurt and disappointed, is, is just come over and touch them. And we, and we see that naturally. You know, when somebody who's upset, even strangers will just hug somebody. Like, I need a hug, or you need a hug. Uh, if we were doing more of that, th this world would change. You're right. Uh, Diana Ross sings that song, Reach Out and Touch. And when she's, I've been to a couple of her concerts in the early 80s, and she gets an entire stadium full of people holding hands that are strangers, and the energy in the, in the place is just lifted, and it's beautiful, and you just feel the love inside of there, and it's humanity really joining together in this music, you know, with uh, right. lyrics of reaching out and touching each other. That's really lovely. Now, your books are about blessings, and the name of your event is An Afternoon of Blessings with John Morton. So at the, towards the end here, can you um, invoke a blessing for our listeners? Here we go. And I just invite everybody listening to open yourself up in your heart and your loving. That to me is spiritual. It is divine. And then what, whatever way you do that for yourself in your worship, if you have a faith. And I say it this way, dear Lord, we invite your presence, your holy presence that's loving and caring to come in and lift each one of us, that we hear your comforting, we feel your touching to us, and that we reach to you perhaps with our hurt, our disappointments, our anger, or anything like that that we can release it, that is cleared, it's healed, that we can let go so we are renewed, we are restored, we bring new insight and inspiration forward, uh, and we see ways in our life that we can make it better. And we trust that there's grace present all around. Beirush Beishan, which is a way of saying the blessings already are. Very much, and thanks for being on the show today and uh, sharing with us your blessings.
Keisha, very delightful and with all of you listening.